So, we'll do something completely different here. This watch has a damaged coil. Alrighty. Let the fun begin. I debated about replacing the entire movement since I have a brand new movement. But No sense throwing away something that works just fine. And yes, you probably can't see it, but the battery release has some scratches on it that go in that direction and I look at the coil um, yeah there's a little damage to the coil looks like somebody's tweezers or screwdriver or whatever slipped and took out the coil so that would explain why this watch sometimes runs and sometimes doesn't, I hope. shaky hands. I think I should have not had any coffee today. All right, one more screw and we'll have the coil out, I guess.
is the circuit board. Put that safely away. Yeah, we're still in camera, so not too bad. Okay, coil time. So, this is the nicked coil. And have coil to replace it. Looks good. Now we're going to use the original circuit board even though I have that new one. If I don't drop it. away from that coil. I'm blocking the view. Not meaning to obscure your view. Just sort of comes natural, I guess. Good.
Looks like my camera shut off to save you a little of the agony. Beep. So I'm using an old digital, not really an SLR, but it's a digital big zoom camera. But unfortunately it's uh, old and the video is 720. So hopefully this turns out pretty well. It's got a lot better zoom than my phone, which I normally use, so decided to use that instead. Screwdriver to get started. Hopefully, catch a thread or two. And we can go to the bigger th screwdriver. Tightened already, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Looks good. Battery turn looks good. Hit it with some Rodico to pick up any, any dust, any metal from the screwdriver. Less than stellar screwdriver work here. And we'll take a look for any major contamination. Don't see any. So, we can keep this in, f in frame. Isolator there, insulation in place. Grab the battery. That wasn't smooth. Movement. So it looks good. Now get the case ring back in. So what I'm going to 
do is take the screw down crown. Should probably loosen that earlier. There we go. And I suppose while we're here, we should put in some fresh grease on that ring. I know there are foam pads you can do, but I just take a little grease between the finger cots. I think it does a nice job of pulling off any excess. And then, without using that finger cot, I can just lay it in. And this is just the silicone grease. Keeps the O-ring a little bit supple. Make sure we'll just keep our water resistance. And then, looks like I got some on the ring, so we'll just Radico Swiss Silly Putty Plato Do it with the case back. Taken away. And it is what? Actually, put it the six twelve. That would be a good thing. All right. There you go, a Venger Seaforce. Amateurly fixed by a club handed would be watch mechanic. All right, I'm gonna take the damage coil. I wonder if I could, could probably, probably repair this coil. So, off camera, I've taken a little bit of the circuit board repair compound 
and took a micro oiler for a watch and put a just a tiny drop on the area where it was nicked by the tweezers and what I'm going to do now is just make sure that there is a closed circuit so if the current will run through without any resistance it obviously goes to zero there should be some resistance somewhere around 2,000 ohms I would imagine so we'll just see where we're at 1,500 to 2,000 I can find the two contacts and they're relatively close together so looks like we're at 1876 ohms so good I'm gonna put this back in the movement the donor movement and I'll have a basically a working movement albeit a somewhat damaged movement. So, what do I need here? Because I need my donor movement. I need to make sure we have the terminal sides up. Because the circuit board is going to sit down on top of it. And I want to make sure good and clean. We were kind of holding it in at Rodico, so it really had no choice but to be clean. So we'll drop the coil in place. Then I'm going to want to get the circuit board on top of that. And I want to make sure there's no dust or debris on the contact areas or on the board itself. Looks nice and clean. I'm sure that was off of camera, but that's what I was doing. circuit board on top of the coil contacts. Here we go. And we'll get the relatively large screw. there is I used a smaller screwdriver which was easier to get into the slot than the size screwdriver that fits the entire width of the screw so that's in but in loose so when you last saw the would be watch guy he had put one screw in the circuit board, got the top plate on, he's going to put the second screw in the top plate, messed it up royally, and knocked out the contact battery terminal, which came out from underneath the circuit board. So now, I'm going to lift the corner of that circuit board, hopefully, drop that into place over the stud, 
and on to the plastic stud. Drop that back down. Turn this screw back in a little bit more so it doesn't fall out. But we won't fully slug that down until we get the rest in. Alright. So, back to square one, square two, square three, square four, wherever we were. So, out of focus, of course. Can you come back into focus slowly? Surely? Don't call me Shirley. So, rather than start with the other screw, let's start with the screw that gave me the most problem. This will, this will tighten down not only the battery terminal, the circuit board, and the top plate. Some radical. screw that I'm going to tighten to. Then we have one more screw on the coil. Goes through the top plate. For whatever reason does not have any lead-in chamfer. It does, it's not enough to catch the screw thread. fits the head. Here's 
Perfectly isolated, but where's the battery for it? 371. 371. battery out. Well, I guess I'll pull that back. <laughs> and hopefully not Nick theme. Oil. All right, so batteries in place. Let's see if I don't have a second hand handy do I? I don't think I'd get it on without a dial, anyways. Well, you sit nice that side, but there is the little stop that keeps the hour pinion down. So what I'll do is set that to that screw. Put the winding stem in and then give it about a minute or two. And just make sure that we've got a running watch. Went and found a second his hand and dropped it on, so I now have a running movement. So a decent enough spare, I suppose. So there you have it. Another cheap old watch repair. Anyway, I think these are what $15 movements, so are they worth repairing? Probably not. Was it worth replacing the coil on a whatever that Venger watch was for $200 watch? Yeah, I guess it was um, for a $10, $15 coil. So, hope you're doing well. Take care. And perhaps I'll see you with a pipe next time.